Yeah. 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 Yeah
Also on the altar table are some little cross bookmarks that say he has risen. They were left over from last year, so um, you may take one of those if you want. And there's also a little yellow piece of paper. I really want you to take one of these too. I'm going to read this to you because it's food for thought. Okay. I didn't, I didn't write this. I found it online. Uh, just kind of jumped out of my computer. It says, Judas ate too. In that room, hours before the death of Jesus, Judas ate too. Jesus fed Judas too. Jesus prayed for Judas too. Jesus washed Judas's feet. I struggled to fathom that kind of love, a love that would feed the mouth that deceived you, a love that would wash the treacherous feet of the traitor, a love that could forgive even the vilest of betrayals. I honestly struggled to, com to comprehend it. And then suddenly I realize that I am Judas. And in that moment, I am so thankful and altogether overwhelmed that Judas ate too. I thought that was powerful because sometimes by not speaking up in, in, in um, defense of Jesus, it's an act of betrayal. Um, sometimes we don't love like we're supposed to, and that's an act of betrayal. Um, I just thought this was interesting. It, it made me stop and think. It, it kind of humbled me. So I think that's all the announcements. So as we prepare our, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Dawn has an announcement. And then. week with um, the district superintendent and he um, doesn't have a new pastor for us yet so announcement Sunday we won't have an announcement but he is looking he said he won't give up looking he has no intention of closing us so we can say hallelujah, hallelujah. and then um, and if he doesn't have one by the time uh, Pastor Jeannie's last Sunday is. Um, we're going to do rotating people from the district and we'll continue to have the services. So he found Jeannie, he will find somebody else. Amen. Okay, hallelujah. hallelujah. We just need to pray and just pray.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Darkness has been vanquished. The light is always to come. come, let us worship and celebrate the good news. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, our first hymn is going to be um, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Page 302, if you're going to use your hymn.
Bible says you for family, fraud, and pop, or dancing. Are there any others? as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, she's not here. Now, we're going to receive our offerings. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? So if the ushers would come forward, please. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many blessings. Thank you for for all the things that you've poured out on us. Let us now return those to you in our gifts and our offerings. Amen. Oh, she's back.
Dear God, thank you for these blessings. Please use these gifts and offerings for the glory of you. Amen. So now I think we're going to hear from the Ringlings, you got back just in time.
I'm not musical, but that really looked hard. And I think it was, wasn't it? I mean, they, they, have, they have worked hard. Whoops. Y'all still there? Trevor's back there doing somersaults. Because I just, am I still on okay? I didn't loosen anything? All right. But they have been working hard and, <clears throat> and really haven't been playing that long together. I mean, it's, I, I love it. And thank you so much for sharing your gifts, all of you who play. <clears throat> the scripture for this morning is from John 20. 1 through 10, and then later after that, 11 through 18. Anyway, there's two different parts. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and he believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And in John 20, 11 to 18, it says Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she swept, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. And at this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said, these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and our minds to hear you. God gave us Easter. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We just read scripture that tells us about the empty tomb. Some people said it was a trick that someone let Jesus out of the tomb before anyone was there. But to make sure that there was no trickery, Pilate had sent guards to put a royal seal on the stone, and they were instructed to watch over and secure the tomb. And still, the stone was rolled away, and Jesus was not there. His burial clothes were there. The linen that wrapped his face was there. But Jesus was gone. He is risen. Jesus was resurrected. The empty tomb testifies that everything Jesus claimed about himself was true. He was 
God in the flesh. He had absolute authority over everything in creation and authority over life and death. Jesus had the power to forgive sin. He could grant eternal life to everyone who believed in him. Jesus' resurrection proved that death had been defeated. The penalty for sin was paid in full by Jesus. Without the resurrection, we would have no hope, no grace, no mercy. We would not have eternal life. We would be living in sin, knowing no difference, not even knowing that we were sinning. We would live in sin and die in sin, and that would be it. Nothing more after death. Without the resurrection, there would be no faith. We might as well go on living for ourselves, living for the moment, because there would be no hope of anything else. In 1 Corinthians 15, 17, it said, If Christ had not been raised, your faith doesn't mean anything. Your sins have not been forgiven. And those who have died believing in Christ are lost also. But Christ is risen. He is resurrected. And because of that, our faith stands firm. We can believe. We have hope. Easter's not just a single day. It's a season. It's also known as the Great 50 Days. And it began last night at Easter Eve at sunset. This season continues to the day of Pentecost, which this year is June 5th. Easter Sunday represents the freedom that we have living a victorious life connected to God. We know that because of God's grace. Our sins are forgiven as we have the choice to live in abundant joy for all the days to come. Easter is a season of great gladness for those who know Christ. But for those who are without the light of knowledge of God's glory, there is nothing to rejoice over. Each of the Gospels tells of the resurrection, but each one has just a little different slant on the story. We just read from John. John is writing for a general audience and expresses deep theological concepts in the simplest language, so most can understand it and hold it in their hearts. John, along with Peter, were the two disciples who went to the tomb and saw that Jesus was gone. He paints the most human portrait of Jesus, and he tells about his everyday interactions with his friends and disciples. John emphasizes the human moments of the relationships that Jesus had with his disciples and how close they were, how closely they were all connected. John describes the encounter with Jesus and the disciples where they all gathered after his resurrection. In John 28, 18 to 20, it says, Then Jesus came to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am with you always to the very end. Matthew was speaking primarily to a Jewish audience who by nature of their culture had long awaited the, arri the arrival of their Messiah, but they truly did not recognize Jesus as the one that they had been waiting for. Matthew tried to show them that Jesus was the Messiah. He was descended from David and would rule a limitless, eternal kingdom. Matthew is the only one of the Gospels who records the earthquakes that accompany both the death of Jesus as well as the resurrection. This is talked about in Matthew 27, 51, 50, 51, and 54. It says, after Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he died. At that moment, the temple curtain was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split. The Roman commander and those guarding Jesus saw the earthquake 
as in all that happened, they were terrified. They exclaimed, he was surely the son of God. On the day of Jesus' resurrection, it says in Matthew 27, 2 through 4, there was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and the angel went to the tomb and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His body shone like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. It goes on to say in Matthew 28, 7, that Jesus says to the woman Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, go and tell the disciples, he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. When the disciples go to meet Jesus, he states his sovereign power, his absolute power, by saying the same thing John stated. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. By saying these things, Jesus is asserting that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. It's a staggering statement, but one that tells the Jewish listeners that Jesus was and is the Messiah. The Gospel of Mark relates that Mary Magdalene is the first to actually see the resurrected Jesus. Jesus told her to go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of them into Galilee and that they should go there to see him. That's in Mark 16 and 7. I wondered why he singled out Peter, said his name specifically in this scripture. Maybe it was because Peter had three times denied knowing Jesus, just as Jesus had predicted. And this mention of him specifically, maybe that was an offer of forgiveness, an example of the grace of God and the forgiving nature of Jesus. Luke was much more a detail man. In his writing, he gathered historical details and eyewitness accounts. He did this in order to provide accurate and authentic evidence. He did this to, to prove the certainty of the narrative. His description of the angels at the tomb is one major difference. Luke describes them as two men in dazzling white apparel. Luke goes on to tell the events on the road to Emmaus. Jesus appeared to two men. They are his disciples who do not recognize Jim, J Jesus as they walk to the village. They invite this man to stay and eat with them. When he breaks bread and gives thanks for it, their eyes were opened and they recognize Jesus. And then Jesus disappears right before their eyes. This is one of the longest descriptions of an appearance by Jesus after his resurrection. Luke has much more to say about the post-resurrection events than any other gospel writers. Luke and John both talk about Jesus' encounter with the disciples in the upper room and of Jesus showing them the wounds in his hands and his side. The purpose for writing about these events is to inspire faith in Jesus as the Christ, as the Son of God. Each writer had a little different slant on the events just as we today can witness an event together at the same exact time, and I'm sure we would each have different descriptions to give. The variety of perspectives, agreeing in essence, but diverse in details, is what we would expect from any credible set of eyewitness accounts. Taken together, they offer a unified, compelling mosaic of testimony, inspired, and preserved by God to the most important event in the history of the world. God gave us Easter so that we might have hope, so that we might believe, so that we might have eternal life. We've been through a lot these last two years. We've never experienced things like this before. And life hasn't completely returned to normal to the carefree, easy way that we used to live. But it's getting closer to normal. 
We have emerged from this pandemic crisis with a new appreciation for the simple joys, simple, more valuable time in everything, everyday activities, the joy of friendship and family relationships, the freedom and the abundance that we enjoy here in America. We face each day with hope, with courage, and with the assurance that God is in control. We are Easter people, and we know the resurrected Christ because we believe. Jesus left us with the great hope and the certainty that he is going to return to bring a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no more sorrow, no more trouble, no more suffering for those who believe and follow him. But rest assured, there will be trouble, sorrow, and suffering for those who have neglected or rejected him. As Christians, our great task is to obey the command to tell the whole world about Christ, to tell everyone about our Lord who is crucified, buried, and yet is risen again. Are we doing that? Do we intentionally share our faith with others? Do we tell others how God has worked in our lives, share how God has taken our brokenness and healed us? My prayer for you during this season of the year, when we meditate on our Savior's great sacrifice for us on the cross, is that you will be filled with great peace and hope because he is risen. That's the good news. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Dear God, you gave us Easter so that we might have hope so that we might believe. Let us live with that in our hearts. Let us honor our Lord and Savior Jesus each day by sharing his love with others, by telling others about our Jesus. Amen. filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory
the sound for his coming one day the skies with his glories will shine a wonderful day my beloved one bring me wonderful day my beloved jesus is mine seal him no longer but one day the stone rolled away from the door and then he arose over death he had conquered now is ascended my lord evermore death could not hold him the grave could not keep him from arising again sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day oh one day the trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one bring me my savior jesus jesus is mine because living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming glorious day oh glorious day so now as you're able we're going to stand and sing he lives which is number 310 in the hymnal and also on the screen
So don't forget, there's a couple things up on the Lord's table um, if you want to take. And now as we go about our week, may the God of love and the love of God and the God of grace and the grace of God and the God of peace and the peace of God be with each one of us as we continue to grow into the likeness of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you.